Welcome to your first Mac, MacBook Pro, or iMac. Hi, I'm Joshua Young, and I'm going to give you just a little walkthrough about Mac. If, you're, if you've been a PC user, there's going to be some differences. In the end, you'll find they're a lot better, at least in my opinion. I find Mac and Apple products tend to make things just a lot faster, and they don't give you 11 options to do the same thing. They give you two or three maybe sometimes four, but it's pretty good for uh, for users and especially for first-time computer users. So the first thing I want to direct you at is the Finder window. Finder is basically how you look into folders. Now if you're new to computers, I want you to think of your computer temporarily as a filing cabinet, just a really, really powerful filing cabinet. And in a filing cabinet, you're going to have folders, which this, which the computer does, just a digitized version of it. And within those folders, eh, there are files. Now, anything can be a file. You can file away a DVD in real life. You can file away anything and then call it a file. And that's how I want you to think about uh, saving things on your computer, is that they're files. So you can create folders, and then you can create files and put files in there. A file could be a Word document, it could be um, a video file, it could be an audio file, but they're all files, all right? So that's the Finder window right here. And uh, you can create new folders just by simply, all I'm doing is tapping once on my trackpad or left-clicking if you're using a mouse, and just moving my mouse over uh, all of these options here. And if you go to File, you can click on New Folder, and a new folder will be created. Don't do it yet. Today is about an overview. The most important thing in this area is to look at the little Apple icon here. If you just click on About This Mac, you're going to get information regarding your Mac, and that's just important, especially if you call up customer service. They may ask you a few questions and uh, if you're having an issue with your computer. And so the first thing you should do is go up to the little Apple uh, symbol at the upper left hand corner, click on About This Mac, and take a look. You can also click on the Apple symbol to update your software. And that's really, really important to do. I would say it's important to do it at least once a week, given you know how much software you might have. Uh, this is also where you can go to restart your computer shut it down. You can go here to put it to sleep or log out, but I really find that the only two options one would use would be shut down or restart, because when you close the lid of your uh, Mac laptop, it actually puts it to sleep, which means it's still running, but the minimal amounts of, um, of programs are running. And so you can open your Mac right, you know, back up just by opening the lid and it'll come awake again. So to me, putting it to sleep is just closing the lid and, you know, everything else is turning it on or off, which you'll want to do once a day. In my opinion, you should always turn your computer, whether it's a laptop or whether it's a home computer, you should turn it on off at the end of the day, at least. I wouldn't turn it on and off every single time you want to use it, but at the end of the day, it's good to give it a rest. I've seen people that have kept their computers on for weeks and then they complain about how their computer is slow. Well, I'm pretty slow if I'm awake for a few days, so I can only imagine a computer. Now, over on the right-hand side, you're going to see some other information. You're going to see uh, your basically your time machine. Time machine is when you want to back up your data, and there will be other tutorials about that later. It's not important initially. And uh, this is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is important if you're going to be using a wireless mouse because all of them are Bluetooth. And again, I'll be doing a tutorial about that later. But if you're just using your trackpad to move around, then you know that's not something you need to worry about right away. Over here, this is your wireless signal, and that's really, really darn important. Now, um, a client of mine calls this the uh, a coffee filter because when it's turned off, it actually looks like a coffee filter. So you can you know when it's turned off or turned on because when it's off it just has an outline of a coffee filter. And if you tap once on your trackpad or a left click using your mouse, you'll see the options are turn on Wi-Fi, which is your wireless internet, or open network preferences. Unless you have some experience in Wi-Fi, you really only want to go to this option, turn on Wi-Fi. And it's looking right now for a wireless signal. 
and there you go. As soon as it finds it, we can see that it's all filled up. Depending on your wireless signal, you know, you may see full bars like I do right now, or you may see two or three bars, depending on its strength or weakness. This is your audio, where you can uh, click and move your audio up and down, but you can also do that on your keyboard. And on a lot of MacBook keyboards, it'll be the F11 and F12 key. You can see the speakers there. I'm more of a fan of using um, a combination of my trackpad, my mouse, or, and my keyboards. Uh, right here, the 97% is telling me my battery life, and it's also telling me that it's being charged. That's a little charge symbol. If I actually unplug the cable to my laptop, we'll see it's now operating off of the battery. That's the symbol for that. So I'll plug it back in, and in a second, there you go. You can see that it's charging. Other than that, we've got the date, and we have my name here, because I'm registered with this computer. And that's all you need to know about the top. Now, at the bottom, if I just move my mouse down, you're going to see my dock come up. Now, that's a preference. Some people already have their dock up, and it's not designed to operate like this. Um, it's up to you, and I, I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial about that. But this, these are your basic applications, or at least these are the applications that I have. And these are my favorite ones. You can actually pick and choose what applications go into this area. And you can take a look at more of your applications by clicking on Launchpad. Launchpad shows you more and more of your applications. Now, if you're not using a mouse, if you're using your trackpad, you can see here that I've got two um, screens of applications. So to get to the next screen, you actually just put down two fingers on your trackpad and move it to the right and you'll get to see the next screen. So you have to have two fingers down and move it to the left and move it to the right. And it is a lot of fun. So these are where you can choose your applications. And if you're new to computers, applications are how you, are how you do things. So we've got applications for creating Word documents. I have applications for working with video media. I have a calculator. And all you have to do is tap on one to open it up. And there's my calculator. You can either, for the calculator, just so you know, you can click on you can click on each word and do your math that way. Or you can also go plus and type it in to your keyboard. To quit an application, and this is very important, you have to actually either go up here, click once on the name of the application, and click on quit whatever the name of the application is, in this case it's calculator, or when you're on the application, which we know we're on because we see the application here, but more importantly we see it in the upper left hand corner where normally the word finder is, but to quit that application you can also hold down the command key on your keyboard and tap the Q, uh, the letter Q once, and you'll see that the application disappears and closes. Here's a trick though, and this is a common issue I find with people who are new to Macs or new to computers. Sometimes you'll click away from this application. So I'm actually just going to click on my desktop here. So just going to click once. And now if you look up in the upper left hand corner, we see the word finder, but we also see that this application is here. Now that's, that's kind of a tricky thing. It's basically telling you that the application is still on, but you've, since you've clicked on the desktop, you've chosen Finder. Now, I want you to keep your eyes on the upper left-hand corner and see what happens when I click once on the calculator. You see the word changes back. So now keep your eyes on the upper left-hand corner again, and I'll click back and forth so you can see. See how it all changes there? So that's important. So a lot of times I'll see people going, I'm trying to do the Apple Q or the Command Q, uh, hold down the Command key and tap the Q button, but it's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, if, you're, if you don't know why you can't close an application, look up and see if the name of the application is where the word Finder is. If it's not there, you have to click on the application, and then you're good. Another situation I see many times is I see a person clicking on the uh, yellow dot, shrinking the application, but they see the application up here and they don't know what's happened. That yellow dot just shrinks the application. If you move your mouse down into your dock, you can see that it's here. You can also see that it's on because in your dock, applications that are on have this little 
little, little, little rectangular on light at the bottom. It used to be a lot brighter in uh, previous versions of Apple, and I miss that, but this is the new way. So you just click again, and you're all good. You see the application again. So I'm just going to go to Calculator and Quit Calculator, and we're done. Now, if you wanted to add things to your doc, or if you wanted to, you know, download programs, there are going to be other uh, other tutorials about that. This was a basic introduction about your uh, Mac and your MacBook Pro. If you have any suggestions or any questions for me about uh, more tutorials, let me know. I'll be doing some on using your webcam, connecting with family and friends through uh, applications like Skype, how to download applications like Skype, and uh, further things like that. But send me an email anytime at computertrainingbc at gmail.com and don't forget to visit my website www.computerhelpbc.com. Thank you very much.